You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is Kasabian with the opening two tracks on the brand new album Happenings, which has just come out. You heard A Happening into Darkest Lullaby, and I'm very pleased to say that the one and only Serge Brazano is sat in front of me. Hello, Serge. Hello. It's great to see you, and it's great to see you after watching you on the telly last weekend. You were in Glastonbury yeah. performing. Um, I was at home watching it, and it was absolutely fantastic. And it, and it was great to hear the new songs, the old songs put together and watch the crowd go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it was real. It was special. It was like there was a, I don't know, like it's weird, sort of a fizz in the air. I don't know, man. Like, I, it's hard to describe when it goes like that because it's just, it's, it's, it's like tangible like you can feel like like the i don't know just i don't, i got even li- listen to me mumbling through this because <laughs> i can't even describe it it was one of the most amazing shows we've ever done and i've never seen an energy honestly never seen a feet like a crowd that like engaged and just ready you know what i mean it was crazy yeah yeah well that bodes well doesn't it It does because the new tunes went down so well and usually you know it's like new songs and that high oh, big deep breath everyone but it's like no nah, no nah, it was like yeah everything and i think it's just given a i don't know we've re-looked at all the old stuff everything's just got a you know we've gone under the bonnet and took all the sort of spark plugs out you know what i mean yeah cleaned everything and put it back together now we've got this muscle car that's just <laughs> off the scale fantastic and and in some ways happenings the new album is a muscle car too because it's, yes. it's the shortest <laughs> yes. album that you've created it's just over yes. 28 minutes long um and it's got so many bangers it's just it yeah just bangs that was the idea really was just um just like make an album full of huge songs that could be played in fields with loads of people in um yeah um and no verses just try and write choruses so i'd sort of you know no middle eights just is so everything could be a chorus the whole album you know every the verse is every it's just the whole thing is just this big big like tune after tune and just ready for everyone to just lose their minds to enjoy just pure joy really yeah Fantastic. And different shades of joy, in a way. I mean, Darkest Lullaby is an example because that's more of a, a kind of mid-paced disco number yeah. with this pulsing bass line. Totally. Um, which kind of takes us to the dance floor, in a way. Yeah. Um, but but we're going to be shaken up and and <laughs> shown many different ways yeah, exactly. of grooving it's on exactly. this record. It goes back and forth from the mosh pits to the dance floor. But yeah, I was thinking about Vanilla Fudge. Um, I was thinking about um, Babe Ruth. Those like amazing seventies records. Yeah. So these are bands in a way who were born in the psychedelic era, yeah. but also embraced soul and Motown and tried to marry the two, didn't they? Exactly that. Yeah. And that yeah. was the kind of that was the place we were fishing for those songs. Yeah. And and lyrically, darkest lullaby. What's that? It's one just about? a heartbreaker, really. I mean, it mm. just you know I I tend to sort of that one like one of the rare occasions I, that was just a guitar. You know, I was an early morning, you know, kitchen, just pick up the guitar, play the chords, and then everything just falls into place. Like, I sang it as it's going down. The lyrics came. I was like, oh, okay, that makes, that's kind of nice. And then, you know, 15 minutes, the song is finished, and then get it in the surgery, and then start thinking about production. And, you know, those bands I mentioned, it'd be great if this song sounded like that. But yeah, that, that was one of the really traditional way of writing a song. Like, old school guitar and it just happens right in front of it falls into place it's just the magic and you wish god you wish that could happen every time <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say you make it sound so easy <laughs> i mean that honestly for the uh, rare rare occasions you yeah. know and, and there's been a few where that's happened yeah and um yeah yeah well I, I like the idea that it, it comes to you in the kitchen and then you go to your studio the surgery but that is actually about Five minutes walk from from your kitchen. Yes, it is so close now. Yeah, yeah, which is brilliant. Call is the next song, and in contrast to Darkest Lullaby, this has kind of bass shaking riffs to it, and mm. and it's so yeah, yeah. propulsive. Yeah, this is like, this has really got like the Kasabian DNA. This is like a you know, it's just like eight albums now I've written, and this this is like a real, you know, like. My process, the way I I put songs together, 
the call has has all the hallmarkings of something like you know back in the day like a process beats or even the way I put together like you know fire or, or underdog you know they've got that that they start with this bass line on then this rhythm and then I'm sort of wandering around the studio physically getting into you know like morph into the beat and the rhythm and try and find something that captures the imagination record a load of, of sort of melody and, and then go oh that's nice and then it sort of sparks from there very different to darkest lullaby yeah but just it's infectious you know and even you know talking and starting the, the this piece with glasto i mean that just went i mean it's the first time we played it in in, in england and it just like we played like i remember some of the big songs we have now it's, they take five years longer even for people to go, oh, yeah, now this is the beat. It's like that just goes like that and it's pretty frightening because it's like, wow, if that's where this starts. So that could be like a real big tune for the band, I think, yeah. over time. But it's just fun as well, you know, like it's got a, yeah, it's got a, springs everyone, it springs everyone in, you know, but it's got a, like a, like the rhythm is just, just fun, you know, you're just infectious, you're just there, you're like, sort of tribal you know yeah yeah and a, a nice simple sentiment in a way you know yeah. i love it when you call yeah I mean, and yeah and like those old sort of great but old pop tunes you know like I, I you know i tend to go all over the place lyrically and i like you know as you well know psychedelia is very close to my heart so i throw people off the track maybe and i just it's dream like images that i like to use but this one's just like ah you know it's great when you call, John. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for inviting me here. <laughs> if I see your name on the phone. It's like, ah, oh, I like it when you ring. <laughs> I love that, <laughs> and and we love it when you come up with tunes like this. As you say, it is so instant. And how far will you go? I mean, that's one minute fifty seconds of frantic, breakbeat mayhem. Yeah, yeah. I look this. You know, again, this is like a this is a real sort of Kasabian banger. Um, yeah, it's just it 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 was. I don't know. It's just like a great. It's just got what you you know. It's got. It's just got the sentiment, and it bangs hard. Like it's the. It's like a one seventy BPM, you know. And it's just how far will you go? Like you know. Like are, are you are you ready to commit? Are you ready to kind of give it everything you got? You know what I mean? It's like that's sort of the band sort of encapsulated. Yeah, and yeah. you sort of just shout. You know, it's a great thing to shout out to. You know to the world isn't it right did you play this one on the set at Glastonbury no we're gonna yeah. this is yeah. getting learned though because this right. is this this is there's a great because it starts with go so like I'm just imagining pure silence and then you know really building up the drama and then waiting for the pure silence in a big room with loads of people everyone's still and then bang go and then everyone just goes you know, <laughs> carnage ensues Fantastic. I mean, where does an idea for this come from? Is it from a beat? Is mm. it for? A... This started off with a with a with a dip, with a rhythm, mm. uh, like a drum loop, because I just like the I just love the chaos of the. And then it's just it's kind of sitting there with a the guitar, and then just feeling your way through it. Usually the beat sort of sings out or something. Or I hear something. And I'm sort of going in and finding it. And I usually try and, no longer than 10 minutes, because you can do your own editing, you know. But then, a bit like, you know, it would just, one day your fingers will fall in the right place. And, and you know, you get the yeah, first riff with the beat. And then, you know, I'll just loop it round and round and round and then just try and work out where I sit in it. But I was like, you know, like, how far will you go? Like, I had that. I was like, yeah, that's it, done. And yeah. then I sort of fit it around that. Amazing. Coming back to me, good is the next song, and you kind of go in a different direction now yeah, of on happening. Yeah, course we do. It's the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is is kind of back to the disco. In yeah, a way. exactly. I mean, it's funny those two tracks. You know, always it's always funny when people hear coming back to me, good, and they go, "Oh no, they've gone pop," and then you hear like, "How far you guys go?" Don't worry, it's fine. Like, you should know by now. Like, there's you know, wait for the album. You should know by now. Um, yeah, just it's just, like it's just a Motown soul sentiment, you know. Don't give up; it's not too late. Yeah. Um, and just yeah, like I was thinking of I don't know, like the you know those great Empire of the Sun records and like you know um, even like uh, 
like sort of French air and you know I just I just loved that sort of vibe and that that sort of summer thing and it was just there like it just one day I woke up and that that's what happened and it's it felt it feels really good so it's like okay yeah that's and it, and and kind of played it a few people and go oh, that's that's kind of kind of could work on the radio and that's actually you know been good for us on the radio you know what I mean it's like yeah. it's great to have like tunes that you just you sort of hear it in shops you know what I mean it's mad like, <laughs> you know when you've got a good tune that's worked you go just walked out of like some mad high street and it's pl playing you know what I mean and that's yeah. for a band like us it's wild you know what I mean yeah. it's kind of great you know? yeah oh totally it's nice to kind of invade those spaces Trojan horse is what we call it <laughs> you sort of get in there with songs like that and then you give them the madness at later on and that little cry within it, ready or not? Yeah, yeah. Is that a sample? It sounds like it could be, but I think it's probably yeah, just no, you. Yeah, no, it's kind of us, like, yeah. in a in a room um, with a load of reverb on it, just sort of doing the whole, you know, just getting, just making it sound like an old sort of beat yeah. sample. Yeah, like you're in the stylistics and you're all in matching suits and exactly. doing a dance And that's routine. the fun, you like, sometimes it's, like, nice to, you know, this far down the line... Like, I'm curious, man. Like, I can't stay and do the same thing, knock out the same tune. Like, I want to be in stylistics for a, a day or an hour, you know what I mean? Why not? You know, I've done everything else, you know. And so it's just, yeah, it's just, it's great to just explore and just see what see what's out there. Yeah, totally. And and this is just one thing that mm. is out there. Um, and Goat is quite a tender song in many ways, I think. You know, it's like a, yeah. a message to either yourself or to other people. yeah. It's empowering, it's like, yeah, I mean, again, with the sort of, you know, like, it's very, it's like, we've got underdog, this is almost like his cousin or brother or whatever, and it's like, yeah, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's good to, for people to feel something, you know, like emotion, and like, if that emotion is like, you know, you could be the greatest of all time, you know, but yeah. it's, and it's about graft, it's about hard work, it's about putting the hours in, it's about sort of you know loving that, like that, what you loving what you do. Do you know what I mean? And just committing and just, and like my little boy showing me like I was, you know I said the story that he was showing me, you know, goat videos, shorts of like you know what I mean like highlight reels and the music so awful. sporting achievements, big sporting things. Mm. And I'm watching it going, this music's bad. Like it needs a theme <laughs> tune. So it was always in my mind to have something that we could, that you could. Goat too, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and whenever you needed something, it's like ah, that. That, and then it's got this sort of crazy Volta Maya sort of solo at the end. It almost goes Top Gun at the end. Yeah, it's it borderline. Is, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, it treads a fine line between preposterous, <laughs> outrageous. Pog. It is true. I mean, but that then, is one you know, epic guitar solo. You need that man. Tim yeah. Carter's a legend. Who is that. playing that? Tim Carter. Right. Like, he's just the boy. But it's like you need. That majesty at the end of a song like that. And it almost says, you know, listen, we, you know, straddle humor is a big part of everything. There's always a little joke in there. And there's always like a little bit of a, you know, <sighs> big suck in. Can we, is, that, is this okay? Do you know what I mean? And if yeah. the answer's like, I'm not sure, then you're probably going the right way. Right. So are you talking about embracing your cringe potentially? Knowing that there could be a moment where you're thinking, hang on a minute. I, it's maybe not cringe. It's it's more the, like in the way King, King Crimson, like I, there's some prog that's just undeniably amazing, but it's very borderline, could go the wrong way. You just, the synth has to be the right synth, do you know what I'm saying? Like the, the rhythm has to be just right, but it can be as proggy as anything, but it has to be, you know, I, I can't, there's some bad examples of this kind of music really bad and you know you never want to hear it and you go don't ever play that again <laughs> and there's some really amazing examples yeah and so that's what you're dicing with dicing with like tangerine dream yeah. you go you know some of it's absolutely perfection yeah yeah i love that i love that idea Cause, and, it, and there's it's interesting because i described it as tender almost and that's that that's kind of the sentiment but there is this ridiculously big beat this massive bass line yeah yeah and, and, and that crazy like, guitar solo totally and it's like you know you could be it's not like i am which i think is a different song you're not saying i'm the guy it's like you could it's like this and you know you could do you know what i mean i like that as well yeah puts it on the listener 
Yeah, you yeah, just... yeah. And it's, it's yeah, you, you could, people using that to psych themselves up to... Right before the Olympics is coming up, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, excellent. And we go from goat to passengers, which is really quite different again. I mean, obviously, you know, we talked about this, the changes. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all about. But passengers um, is, is kind of softer in a way, but it lifts yeah. you up. Yeah, yeah. This is like a real traditional, th- like, song that I've... It's like a real guitar sort of anthem which I'd probably steer clear of or like just be like, I'm just not sure if I'm that interested in that. But I just had that verse, um, you know, nobody's getting out of that. I was like, ah, oh, there's, there's, a, there's a tenderness to that. There's this kind of like undeniable. And it's almost like a sort of late 90s sort of guitar song. But it's, you know, it's got its edge in now and the production's very now but yeah so it, it, yeah it's like felt quite nice to just to have a song like that and to yeah you know it was quite grungy in a way yeah yeah it's interesting because i was trying to work out are those acoustic guitars it's an electric guitar because it's quite yeah no it's strong. electric so yeah it's, yeah it's start, i think it's got starts with acoustic and then it goes it's got like it's almost i think it's a strat uh strat which i again weird for me to use yeah, so kind of stretching yourself in a way. And, yeah, yeah. And yeah. what's what are the words about on this? It's 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 the idea that you know, like the the powers that be, or anyone in your life that's you you just, it, it it turns out you're just a you like no matter what you do, no matter what you say, the car's going off the cliff, and you just you just sort of you know you're sort of sat in the passenger seat watching it go down going well don't you think you should slow down like this is going to go off the cliff you know what i mean but we just sort of watch it happen you know like you know the, the ai conversation the environment it's just like we you can all see what's going on but we just sat here going this looks a bit scary you know what i mean yeah or it can be as simple as you know just watching people self destruct you know right right so kind of we are the passengers uh, or we're watching totally, yeah. what's going on but not yeah. being able to and it's like it happens it. in slow motion when you you can stop it but it's like just, you can't <laughs> yeah you know? wow that's kind of scary yeah way. no it is yeah. and this is it uh, don't get too scared hell of it is another um amazing track and a song of two halves really because it's this incredible energy and then it kind of calms down and and takes us somewhere else yeah 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 like you know, throughout throughout the albums I've made, like you know, like it's it's the juxtaposition between a song starting a certain way and then finishing in a whole another realm, which I love that. Always been a huge fan, and and you know the idea of this album is to keep everything short. I didn't want to anything over sort of three three minutes was like the magic number. Anything around there, so you can do anything within that, but keep it tight, edit it, cut it. You know, no third verses or any nonsense like that. Just keep it tight. Um, and it's sort of, you know, that kind of early Timberland production, almost N.E.R.D. I was just into that, listening to that. I wanted, wanted it, it was the last song to go on the album, so it felt like it just needed something else. Like it needed a riff. Like I, I was like, I was kind of missing a riff, this album. And then, you know, bam, 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 that singing that on my phone, bam. Dan, 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 dan. I was like, wow, that's got some it. And then it goes like Funkadelic Parliament, just from nowhere, just because why not? And it just it makes it something way more interesting if 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 it suddenly just goes swerves, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost kind of French house or French yes, touch or something. I love that. I mean, that's yeah. the you know, I think live as well. I definitely have one eye on on the live show with this record because you know, obviously performing it I, I, I kind of knew that's like I'm going to be there and I want songs it's like what's, what do I imagine the next song in the set list to be it's like I'd love something like that it's like bang we've got it we can just use the one we've got you know what I mean yeah. so it's like that's that, that, that was sort of a big effect on, on the album as well yeah I love that idea that you know you think of of what a live set can be like mm. And then you you just create what you want. Totally, because imagine like I'm thinking an hour in, I'm like going, it'd be great if we had a French house tune. So rather than look for a cover, it's like, well, let's just get one. Mm. We'll have one ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, and you were able to do that, you know. You th- well, yeah, I mean that was the plan, you know. Fantastic, and we go from hell of it to Italian horror. Um, yeah. wait, what's this about? Because the the title suggests 
Uh, well, it suggests a few different things. Yeah, it? it's just like, it's like an Italian goth girl. There's, we, we've got an amazing fan base in Italy and there's always like a bunch of goths there. So it's like, you know, it'd be nice to sort of dedicate a kind of song to that. So it's just like, you know, an imagine sort of this cr like crazy Italian goth and just that you sort of want to get to know, but you just can't because she's just into Italian giallo and, <laughs> you know. So it's just that sort of, you, she just lives on another plane that you can't. You know, yeah. get near, but you're sort of fascinated by it. You know I mean? Yeah, amazing. And of course, that's tapping into your roots, you know, in a way. Because this yeah, is your I think home, so. I like, I used, yeah, I like the sort of intrigue and the kind of uh, of that that you know in Italy. Um, they're going. Oh, what's this song? What's this song? But it's funny because I see like Dario Argento is like the famous giallo director. Mm. His name didn't rhyme, so I was like, I need a kind of cool director. And he, Sergio Martino, which I use because it rhymes really well, it sings great. But I, I did an interview in it and I thought, yeah, he's a kind of really obscure guy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, like they were like, and why didn't you use us? Like, he didn't rhyme. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so, I yeah. love that. You know, there, there are simple necessities. They are, that, they are know. simple. And it's funny, he's got the same name as me as well, which is kind of a weird sort of reference. But right. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah, that's got a lovely, there's almost like a bit of the, it also like the middle eight sort of goes. It's actually got middle eight, which is weird for the sound, but it's got like a almost like a faces thing that happens midway through. And even the way I'm singing it, I'm trying to sort of you know use that real grovel, seventies grovel. Uh, but it's got a you know it's hooky as you know. Yeah, is it's that the bit I was thinking weird? of the gorillas as well, and just thinking of that kind of like I love the way Damon does that with a weird pop. Like he makes pop records, but like obscure. That he just, you know, twist them about a bit, which yeah. is what we tried to do. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the section with the you need saving mm. from yourself bit. Exactly. That's yeah. where you slot in your mind. Yeah. You're going into the faces. Uh, yeah, and the faces and the eagles. Yeah. Like that sort of half time, and it goes a bit eagles. Yeah. Fantastic. I love all these ingredients in what Yeah, you're I doing. mean, it's weird because it's funny what other people hear, but that's kind of where they came from. Yeah. yeah. And I can't believe how quickly this has gone. Yeah. I mean, we know that the album is short. Yes. Um, but, you know, no one's we're, got we're the time through it. Now, <laughs> they just haven't. Have we? No one's got any time. Their tensions. It's not, it's not that he's even got short. It's just there's so much more to look at all the time, constantly. So I'm doing everyone a nice favour on this album. <laughs> the next one I'm changed, but this one, you, you know, I've done you a solid. Yeah, no, it's good. Well, I mean, I, I think it has that magic quality to it, which means you want to hear it again. Yeah, I mean, that's no. truly, that's the one where it's like, let's spin that again. Mm. You know, so you it really double, is that double kind the of streams, record. that's what yeah. we're <laughs> Bird in a Cage is great, though, because it has this kind of great synthiness at the start. And I think, in a way, it's quite, it's quite deep. You know, lyrically, yeah. it's quite deep. It is, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's... It's definitely me coming out of, you know, the last record and just... Just me just finding my feet and you know, coming out of that time. Mm -hmm. It's funny where it comes from, like in, musically though, like nine. It was it was sort of it was like like a Nine Inch Nails sounded like Nine Inch Nails the original because it was just this weird distorted loop. Um, but then, you know, it went like Prince got thrown in, and a bit of the Beatles, and then even like that sort of like late nineties Britney's production, which I was thinking. About. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of... That, that, that. If you sort of listen carefully, you can kind of hear that. Yeah. You know, and then those, you know, like Jay Diller. I love those records, those early Jay Diller records. So it was kind of... That was the kind of soup, do you know what I mean, for all yeah. that. And, I mean, do you feel now that the 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 bird has is out there and you're, you're full yeah, and free? Yeah. I think this album is that. This is mm. the sound of that, really. Yeah. It's the sound of, yeah joy and freedom and yeah you know. and and having been able to now kind of take it out onto a stage perform some of these songs as you did at glastonbury you know and you, you're feeling in your kind of crazy yeti outfit <laughs> um you're feeling kind of that this is the realization of all this work that you've been putting in to kind of, kind of create this new yeah. era of kasabian absolutely yeah 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 and just you know what it's like just appreciate the opportunity, you know what I mean? And that sounds a bit like, 
that is, it, it just really is because for a minute we didn't think we'd ever see days like that and we have and to see that crowd and to I mean honestly to to receive what they're giving is just like wow it's just an honour to be there and you know just hope we can just keep carry on making tunes that excite people and interest people and throw people off the scent and what are they doing this for what's going like that's kind of all part of it you know yeah. We've been following the journey thus far. That's what we've done since day one. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I, I love the way that you seem so grounded about it, though, you know, and almost surprised. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, suppose, know, that, yeah. That despite being, you know, a ridiculously popular band with a whole series of number one albums um, and having headline Glastonbury in the past as something that you have just done, you know, that you still kind of feel almost surprised that, that people are still hungry for it. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I d yeah. I don't know, it's just, like, we we are, you know, the last song which we're going to algorithms, you know, this one's for the weirdos, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, we're not the sort of, I mean, maybe that's why it works, I don't know, but, like, we, are, we aren't the sort of, that like you can't, I don't know, like, it, we, we do pull out moves, you know what I mean? We don't just keep it to the same formula and, you know, we never played it safe ever. I have no idea what that, you know, I can't, do you know what I mean? So the risks we take on the way... You know, like, that's probably where it comes from, just going, wow, well, we've pushed it a bit there and still people are still coming, you know what I mean? But, you know, we just, we give it everything we got and everything you get from this band is from, like, it truly is from the heart, you know what I mean? And it's for art, it's literally, it's for the show and it's for art, committed to that wholeheartedly and we'll see where it takes us. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love that spirit. And it's interesting because, as you say, in Algorithms, which is the last song, you say this is for the weirdos. And I think, <laughs> you know, one of the reasons, even though you've kind of crossed over and become ridiculously successful, at the same time, you still think of yourselves as as the people that you were. You know, you yeah, haven't yeah. lost sight of that. Well, you know, you, you know like... Still wearing Yeti outfits on stage. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It was amazing. Uh, denim Yeti, or oh, um, you, you told me that Noel Fielding described it as Yeti Couture, Yeti Couture which is a great way of describing. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, amazing. So, Algorithms is the last song on Happenings, and it starts with a, an acoustic guitar, mm. and and you you talk about a few different things on this, and it's a kind of gentle way to end the album, but then it turns into a kind of football stadium yeah. chant. Yeah, like. Maybe like a few, maybe like in the past, songs like this have always. I've maybe gone. I'm not sure. It feels a bit traditional, and because it's, it's acoustic. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like it's, it's round that. So they've kind of maybe been, maybe didn't take them as big as they could have gone, or kept you know, skewed around with them so they didn't sound. But I, I, I was just thinking of like, you know, like perfect day, or you know. It's, um, even like um, Psycho Killer or something, and you know they've got that bit of that that chant that's like Psycho Killer, so it's like oh 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 oh, and it was a bit like oh man, that's kind of massive, but like can we sort of is it okay? And then just the more I played it and just would be sat playing it, and I'd go back to it and go, oh no, you know what? There's something there's something quite beautiful about this. And it's amazing that the acceleration of the AI conversation, because when I was writing that a year ago, it was it was kind of just based on we can't forget each other. It's it was like a just a reminder that what really truly makes us all happy is when we spend time together. Like we aren't solitary creatures. Like we don't we don't really belong on our own especially not just sat in front of devices. We are better off when we're all together, exchanging ideas, hanging out, laughing, whatever. And it was a song about that. Like, they'll never feel love like this. Obviously, wherever it goes in the future, God knows, but at this point when that song was written. So I, so it was, it was about that and it was about, you know, being in a show, you know what I mean? And just, you know, the bit where everyone just gets together and sings, like LSF's got it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's that sentiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. It's really interesting how you might write something a, a year ago and and it chimes with everything that's going on in the world in a different kind of way than... Yeah, because the, the, the conversation's yeah. gone so accelerated yeah. at such a pace, you know. So yeah. it's mad. But at the heart of it, 
is heart and soul. Yes, totally. Yeah, that's what you're saying, isn't it? Totally. No, um, no, um, we need each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the record. That just sums it up perfectly. Fantastic. Serge, thanks so much for coming in. Brilliant. Thanks for having we me. We need you. We need happenings oh, by Kasabian as, as frequently as you can give them to us. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Radio X.